As I was uh, preparing to the homily that I'd like to share with you this evening, I'm kind of ambivalent. I, I was, I'm not sure what I'm going to say. So you need to help me out, All right? So on one hand, I was telling myself, I, I think we all know the theme of the readings today. We have heard it. Yet, if I keep repeating it, I don't think anything will happen to your life and mine because I myself fail in the topic. So it seems like our attitude should be, ah, Father Manny, just give up, keep quiet, sit down, and let's all go home, yes? But I think I can present the theme of the readings in a different way so that even the young people, the children, teenagers here, will kind of not only comprehend but appreciate what the message, the good news of Jesus is all about. So, tell me, when you hear the words, love your enemies, children, people, the kids studying in grade school, elementary, high school, you all have friends, huh? Yes or no? But there are kids, boys and girls you don't like to mix, yes? Because they are troublemakers, yes? All right, so imagine you and I are being asked, love your enemies. Stop judging. Uh, do to others as you would have them do to you. You know, the two laws among the Jews, uh, they, they either practice what they call lex talionis. In other words, if somebody hits you, you hit back harder. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Yes? Yet, Jesus, now look, it's so scary because we're being asked to love our enemies. And not only that, you pray for them. It's tough enough to live last Sunday's Beatitudes. Huh? Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn, they will be. Yet, as followers of Jesus, our reactions, especially the message today, is kind of either, uh, it's so difficult to follow all those. Huh? Or we water them down. I like that, remember when someone hits you on one cheek, what, what are being asked for you and me, from you and me, what? Offer the other? I asked that in my seminary, I had a Jesuit professor. We were trying to reflect on the readings about when you're hit on one cheek, turn the other. So being a wise guy, I said, Father, I don't think that's right. And then the Jesuit professor said, yes, what are you going to do? Well. Before that guy hits me on one cheek, I'll either duck or run away. Huh? Makes sense, right? But no. As followers of Jesus, the, first, the second reading tells us, reminds us, we are all created according to God's image. And it's not the image of the first man, Adam. It's the second Jesus. And then an example of loving one's enemies is in the first reading from the Old Testament. Remember, Saul was after David. And yet we are told that incident that David and another person, Saul was sleeping. In fact, another account says he, he cut a little of his cloak. 
to prove that I could have killed you. Yet David did not kill Saul because he was the anointed one. So, the way I would present this is <clears throat> when you say love your enemies, you're, you're following what's happening in the other part of the world, right? I'm talking about Ukraine, Russia, Belarus. Imagine, if war will happen over there, eh, although some of them are Christians, they're killing one another, even innocent lives. And yet, here we are saying, love your enemies. The way I'll present two reflections is this. I'll end with this. The first one, when people come to me and said, and they say, Father Manny, I can never forgive. I cannot be merciful. Oh, by the way, that's beautiful song. Sums it up. God is not only love. God, Deus ibi es caritas. The Lord is kind and merciful. So when people struggle with forgiving even family members, brothers and sisters, or even parents, they tell me, like justifying the way they behave, they say, you know, Father Manny, I cannot forgive because I cannot forget. That's true? Huh? Yes? Because you keep remembering? All right, I have a solution to that. Tell me whether you, I'm right or wrong. To forget, you need to ask God to give each and every one of us struggling to forget what I call, quote unquote, spiritual Alzheimer's. <laughs> See, I know you're gonna react. Huh? Remember, you cannot, people cannot remember things. So do you forget? And so if you forget, then you're able to forgive. Have you heard a priest say that? Now, but be watchful. When you pray for spiritual Alzheimer's, the physical one might happen. <laughs> or even dementia. Finally, raise your hand. How many have devotions to, or the, to the divine mercy? Raise your hand. How, how many pray the chaplet? The, you know, the, you don't have one here. Uh, divine mercy. For all, I know many Filipinos have divine mercy. Huh? Look, you can pray the novena every day at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, asking God that you be merci that he forgives you. But if you yourself struggle to forgive, then you and I are not authentic disciples of Jesus. So, as uh, something was flashed here, March 2nd, not this Wednesday, but next, we enter the season of Lent. So what, I struggle with this, you know, I, I mentioned to you, all of us are, but we cannot water them down, we cannot ignore them. Instead, what it's being asked from all of us, including the children, the teenagers, young adults, and us who are seniors, is to keep trying. Keep trying to practice, not only to love, but to be merciful. By the way, don't mix liking people with loving people. You know, you like and you dislike. But if you cannot love, then the opposite of that is hate. So my dear brothers and sisters, as true followers of Jesus, let's ask God to make each and every one of us 
kind, merciful, and forgiving.